This video looks at the behaviours of discrete systems. Previous videos then have focused on the solutions for continuous time systems. So we had systems of the type x dot equals ax plus bu and we showed that you could find a state transition matrix phi of t and a step response matrix h of t which had definitions like this. What we want to do now is consider how do these observations change if we have a discrete state space system. And what you'll notice is this video is going to be relatively quick compared to all the others because most of the results are actually analogous. A discrete state space model then, the basic equations you're interested in are of this form xk plus 1 equals axk plus buk. And what we want to do is say, can we find a state transition matrix phi of k and a step response matrix h of k. And what we're going to do here is consider how these might be derived. It's assumed that for a step response, we're going to take constant values of the input. First then, let's do the state transition matrix. Now this is equivalent to continuous time, so we can, for example, use transforms, only Z transforms rather than uh, Laplace transforms. So if we have a model xk plus 1 equals axk, then we can come up with a transform model like this. Zi minus A times x of Z equals x of 0, x0 is the initial condition. And therefore, the state transition transform phi of z is going to be z i minus a inverse and you can do an expansion for that and find that it gives you i plus a z to the minus 1 a squared z to the minus 2 and so on so clearly phi of z is known if you do an inverse z transform then you're going to extract individual components of this series and you will see that therefore you get terms of the form a to the power k. So xk equals a to the power k x0. So that's your definition of phi of k. It's simply a to the power k. Now you could argue that this result is also obvious from a recursion of the following formula. So if xk plus 1 equals axk, you do a recursion on that and you very quickly find you get a to the power k. In discrete time, the state transition matrix has an easier form than in continuous time. So we can just write a to the power k, and that was a lot easier to do than all of the machinations we needed when using Laplace transforms or eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions and so on. Nevertheless, even though the formula is simple, computation of this for several values of k would not be that simple because you're doing powers of a matrix, and that's not a paper and pen exercise. Now, in continuous time, we looked at eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions because it gave us lots of insight. So can we do the same for discrete time? And again, we're assumed distinct eigenvalues. So a reminder of the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, you write the matrix A is W lambda V, where W is the eigenvectors, lambda are diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues, and V the left eigenvectors, with the property that WV equals the identity. For a discrete system, the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition can be deployed analogously to the continuous time system in order to investigate the impact of different modes on the overall behavior. So a key word here is this is going to be exactly analogous to what we did in videos 4 and 5. So if you've got xk equals a to the k x0, it's straightforward to show that this reduces to a formula like this, w lambda to the k v. And what we're going to do, reminder here, is we're going to focus on distinct eigenvalues only and do this quickly because it's equivalent to the derivations in 4 and 5. The initial condition can be projected onto the eigenvectors. So you can write x of 0 equals alpha 1 times w1 all the way up to alpha n times wn. And the relevant coefficients can be determined from the left eigenvectors as alpha i equals vi transposed x0. 
So there we go. We've got our linear combination of eigenvectors making up our initial condition x of 0. And we know our properties of eigenvectors, things like vi transpose wj is 0 if i is not equal to j, but vi transpose wi equals 1. So if we plug all these identities together, so what we're going to do is take this formula for x of 0 and plug it into here, then what you find is you end up with an expression w1 lambda 1 to the k alpha 1, w2 lambda 2 to the k alpha 2, and so on. So what's the key point? The solution has got n distinct modes. We've got this mode, which lies along eigenvector 1, this mode, which lies along eigenvector 2, and so on. And what do these show us? They show us that the contribution order k along each eigenvector direction is linked directly to the corresponding eigenvalue because you see there's a lambda 1 to the k here, lambda 2 to the k here, and so on. And you will notice this is exactly analogous to what we did in video 4. The step response. The derivation of the step response can be done quickly using the existing results. So if we take our full discrete model, there it is, xk plus 1 equals axk plus buk, and then we... And what we want to do now is we want to look specifically at this matrix here, hn, which is the step response matrix. Again, we can use transforms. So if I do a transform relationship, for this discrete time series model, you'll see I get z i minus a times x of z equals b u of z. And I can rearrange that to get x of z equals z i minus a inverse times b times u of z. Now you'll remember we've already done z i minus a inverse slightly earlier in this video. So by inspection, I can put the result is b z plus a b z to the minus 2 plus a squared b z to the minus 3, and so on. Now, I've not included the u of z yet. All I've done so far is the z i minus a inverse times b. So now, if I include the observation that all the u's are the same, I will find that x k plus n is going to be b u k plus n minus 1, a b u k plus n minus 2, and all the way down to a n to the minus 1 b u k. And therefore, it's clear that this h n term is given by this formula here. h n is the sum from 0 to n minus 1 of a to the i b. So again, you've got a relatively simple expression. Not easy to calculate on pen and paper, but easy to write down and implement on a computer. Some numerical examples then, and these are going to be examples, as in video 4, of the phase plane, so for just initial conditions. Here's a discrete example. You see you're given the A matrix, the eigenvectors W, the eigenvalues lambda, and initial condition X of 0. And what do you notice? If this line here represents eigenvector W1, and this line here represents eigenvector w2, and you now look at the corresponding eigenvalues, 0.9 and 0.8. Along here, the decay is governed by 0.9 to the power k. But along the w2 direction, the decay is governed by 0.8 to the power k. So clearly, this is relatively fast. This one is relatively slow, and so asymptotically, the state will tend towards the W1 direction. And you will see that's exactly analogous to what we did in video 4. So x of k tends towards the eigen mode with the slowest convergence. If just one of the eigenvalues corresponds to a divergent mode, then clearly the trajectory will approach this asymptotically, and that will follow directly from this expression here. So if you've got one of the lambdas has got a modulus bigger than 1, then clearly the limit as k goes to infinity of that well, lambdas to the k will be 
infinite and therefore that mode will dominate over all the others asymptotically. So a summary, the behaviours of discrete models have close analogies to those of the continuous state space models. The free response can be broken down into bits along given eigenvectors. So you see you've got the eigenvector, which is the direction where the behaviour is happening, and then you've got a mode, which is the eigenvalue. The step response can be derived in a relatively simple fashion using Z transforms, or indeed otherwise if you want, and you find the step response has this form here. N steps ahead, you have B plus AB all the way up to AN to the minus 1.